Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is November the 8th of 2022, and it is Coffee with Pastor. I've got my cup of coffee right here. I've got my copy of the Word of God open to the book of Ezekiel and chapter 3. The book of Ezekiel and chapter 3 is where we'll be reading this morning. I'm looking outside. Blue skies out there. Probably a little chilly, I'm guessing. I have not been outside yet, and we're just looking forward to a good day. It started much, much better than yesterday did, and we're thrilled with that. So let me just say this. It is November the 8th. It's Tuesday. That means it's election day. Midterms are upon us. Make sure, listen to me, make sure you get out and vote. You need to do that. That is your American duty, and by the way, I'll even add, it is your Christian duty to go out and vote. You need to make sure that our voice is heard, and as I tell my congregation, vote biblically. Not what you think would should be acceptable, not, no, vote biblically. And so we will leave it at that. But make sure you get out and vote. Make sure you, our voice is indeed heard. And we would certainly appreciate that. Let me thank you in advance. Let's turn our attention to the bad dad joke. This one's even worse than yesterday. What key is used to open bananas? What key is used to open bananas? Okay, a monkey. I'm sorry. Anyway, we are in Ezekiel chapter 3, and we trust that you're going to open up your copy of the Word of God. Join us, follow along with us as we read um, this chapter of the Word of God. It is 9 o'clock, and so we're going to go ahead, have a word of prayer, and then we'll turn our attention to the reading of God's Word, Ezekiel chapter 3. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence. We thank you and we praise you for a brand new day. Father, as we stand in your presence, you know what awaits us. In fact, as we think about the election today, you already know who's going to win. And Father, thank you. We do pray that as a nation, that you would not give us what we deserve, but Father, that you would deal with us according to your mercy. Father, as we stand in your presence, we thank you for your providence, the fact that you order our lives. And Lord, we just ask that as we gather together, as we read your word today, that you would guide us, you would direct us, you would teach us. Father, again, as we think about the events of today, we, we do pray for our country. We think of crime rates, we think of the abortion, we think of uh, all of these things that are going on, and Lord, we come into your presence, and we pray that you would indeed protect the unborn. Father, we pray that you would protect your people, that you would protect our citizens from crime and those that would do them harm. Yes, Father, we think of our politicians. Protect them. Father, as a nation, we do pray that you would draw us back to yourself. Father, that as a nation that we would be at least a nation that fears you, that recognizes you in our history and in our future. But Father, so often it always has to begin with your people. That we would love you as we ought, that we would obey you as we ought, that we would submit. And Father, we pray to this end in all of our circumstances, in all of our life events. May our first concern be that we would bring honor and glory to you, that we would be obedient to you. And Father, as we do, as you change us, 
we pray that those around us would see, that those around us would understand, that those around us would be drawn to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Thank you for the, uh, the time we have together. Bless it, Father. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go. Get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words to them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from this place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up, and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv, that dwelt by the river of Shabar, and I sat where they sat, and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest them not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I requite at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require of thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. 
And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose, and I went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river Shabar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open my mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear. For they are a rebellious house. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. As I told you yesterday, keep your eye on the glory of God throughout the book of Ezekiel. You'll see that coming up over and over and over again. Keep your eye on it. God is very, very concerned with his glory. You and I are here. To bring God glory. So beloved I'm going to ask you. Today. Focus on. Being faithful to God. To glorifying God. And in all things. Be faithful to him. And also as we say. In all our doing. Let's make sure. That we do not become. Or we do not allow ourselves. To become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Until tomorrow, remember God loves you and so do we. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs>